Welcome back, Mr. Mboj. Mr. Mboj, bismillah, Koranga. Thank you, Kassar. Uh, Mr. Mboj, uh, we have covered the several events that took place in your life during those those days. Fana Jamal Delma, many along with the late Kang Ujamanula Ilabadwokan. Which you believed were not mere accidents. The latter men of many along with the monkey accident, Kenzan or Melongo, Alandarolem. But were designed to eliminate you. But a fair element, many along with the city Kamal from Purke Kunke Kalafili. Correct? That's your position. That is my belief, yes. A latter wall. But as a legal practitioner, uh, you would appreciate that the evidence in support of your claim is not, in fact, conclusive. Well, it's uh, purely circumstantial, yes. And uh, circumstantial evidence for it uh, to be the basis of a positive finding. It has to lead conclusively or compellingly to one conclusion. Exactly so. And in this case, it is not so. Well, I have not yet given the conclusion. Uh, fair enough. But with everything you've narrated so far, it just triggers suspicions. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, uh, so could you proceed with your testimony? Perhaps maybe we would reach to the conclusion where one would have to make a final assessment. So, so in August 2016, you had this accident. That is correct. Proceed, please. Yes, after escaping from that accident, I moved from my house and I moved to Kanifing Estate. Was that a plan or a precautionary safety measure? What I mean by a plan is, was that part of your plans before this accident or, or was it done as a result in order to protect, uh, protect your, yourself. Well, uh, yeah, yes. Yes. The movement was a precautionary measure. And, and also because of my inability to drive, I get my children closer to their schools where they don't have to pay transport to go to school. Sajako, in same Dingol, in say Katandi, Karambola, Mialanke, Saja, the general Fang Puria Paso, Joni Bita Karamoto. Was it more a convenience measure or was it a safety and security measure? For Yaki, Kulekam Puru, if I'm all a Puru, it was sort of near Dia Kandamba, for Yaki, Kulekam Mialanko Puru, Tankandro Kamalamba. It was both. A full of Belem. Why a safety measure? You've explained the precursor, sorry, why the Safety measure. You've already explained the convenience aspect of it. Well, I realized from the accident. And 
related to the facts that I already have from the junglers whilst I was in prison. And for now, not an actual in your local call, a me along or will look at an in jungle, Yakuma come on me for your what to me and Becca Soto. Tell us precisely what the junglers told you. Silang of your Kumala Sutun Kumala Sutun Conodrong, a jungle, Yamunafoy. Yes, um. I can't recollect the name of the particular individuals because all of them come one after the other. Hakilo from Mombula, the Ninki, Nimo, Fonla, the Mia Nimfonia, Katumim, Katan Wallenind, Ibe Canale, Killing Killing. Does the name by law ring a bell? Niamo by law, Isondomogon of Obefend Molotos, Mudale, Yemol, Molto Mianco, Mede Sondomogon. By law is one of them. By law, Dabe Con. I raised the name because you raised Nene Cham. Yes. Having been their lawyer. Nia Jenganying two or four Wolem Nindigo, yet Nene Cham to Olefoja, and Nene Cham, Molto Mianco, and Nakitin Laloyati. And yesterday she talked about them. And Don Kunum Adiamta will not call a Janne. Uh, and we have correspondence suggesting that she was their lawyer, that's why I suggested that name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. by law has confessed publicly that he was a jungler. By law, we are the has confessed publicly that he was a jungler. By law, we are saying that he was a jungler. Yes, he is one of them. Uh -huh. I can't recall that name very well. Adabe Konola and Hakilo Blabo Tom Tale Kendeke. What did they tell you? You know, for it. Now, um, if they have instructions to assassinate anyone, say, na tarako ye yama rosa to wala kuma kanga pro momi alam ko yenta kafale. They use all kind of camouflage. Ka kuol bele ka ka kuol ke mi alam ko fang amang tarakering. To make the accident or the scene look like artificial. Isajeko woku ni wala accident ni yake koko fenne mi alonga mang alandar kuole. Could you could you take that again? O murundi na ukotenge bang. To make it look artificial or to make it look like an accident. Kake yala ni nyala mi alonga ni mi ya nyabo ito accident ni gaiba mi ira loko alandar kuole mbogaranto kai ba landi na ni nyala mi alonga. Yes, to make it look like an accident. Because I can recall how they narrated the accident of Mr. Fati. With a truck and a taxi involved. And in this case, in my particular case, this is a truck and a van. But I was not sure whether there was a taxi behind me like it was arranged in Mr. Fatty's case. But there is communication between the driver of the truck and the taxi driver. Chokinyolo, abenunjele, drivo, motoba drivo ning, anin taxi on benyato. In which instance? The Fati instance or your own instance? Fati la tabang for iteta. In Mr. Fati's case. Mr. Fati la Carola. So in essence, you using the parameters of similar fact. Munta, wo ibe ibe misalo le di kang wo misalo ko la danya la menketa wo wo odora la. To suggest that what happened in my Fati's case. Is what actually happened in your case? Kafuko mengeta my fati la tani ndo wale kete ifananda. Yes, exactly, because wale phone. I I cannot confirm a taxi behind me to follow me. Atu konta seni ndi nola kote taxi bengo malemi alonga be black and teleno. But then the van that was ahead of me. But the vano mi alonga wale benyati nola. Made a sudden break. Atariada drug aloda. Forced my driver to. Divert. And then the truck arrived at the same time. Uh, was the truck coming from a different direction? Exactly from the opposite direction. Uh, Mr. Mbuch, uh, Mr. Mbuch. You, would, you would agree that for that plan, to work, the truck driver needed to have contemplated 
fero la mia lon ko am nyanna calcul needed to have known nyanna jarta pour aya lon that your driver ko itala driver would serve ba blo faila le in the direction fanala in which the truck was coming from da men yalon ko moto ba bina ko fanal correct nya Yes, uh, ah. this is uh, you can make a simple conclusion out of that. Ah, isa fo mutano ka keta wala nyam. Because But, okay, proceed, yeah, proceed. Because the scene of the accident atuko accident of fo keta damindo is a school or schools. Sa fo ko karambunga wala karambunga. There are so many school going children on the highway. No wato ya tra fo na dindin jamal bi je mi ayam ko ibita kan karambunga. You can obviously conclude that when you break suddenly in front of my vehicle so I, i cannot go on the right that's on the on the side of the traffic sa i balon na ko comme ni inata do lo ta nyato teriyake balon na ko contem blo fayno la bul bakaro la you can Kato only go on to. one side that is where the vehicles are coming from isita no kara do nyin da mal la kadu motol be bokan no walto kana but why couldn't your driver have swerved to the left silam muna e tele drive nyin ma blo fay kata marala Well, he swapped on the left instead of the right. Ah, the ngoji tana blubala amanta na mara. No, on the left. Amarala, amarala, amanta na blubala. Because there are people on the side of the road. That is the right side. Katu molle benu wosilo kang wale mbulba karoni nti. And the area is full of school children. And this was eight. 15 precisely ndong ngeng wo ma fo ngeng karamuta dindo wol lebe siaro nje katu wato le miyalo ko talanse len kata fo talanse na tamuta minute tanni lolo i raise these issues mr mboj ngeng ko ngeng nya de ngani fo na for the purposes of the assessment of the conclusion you are inviting the commission to draw ngeng kamala e be commission ngi be bu nya kan jamen do pour ni nyala bo ngim be da be ko ngi suman na nyame for that conclusion to be valid pour wo kuma kan nyinga be to bondi la nyaame pour ay kuma ya you have already accepted that the truck driver needed to have known that your driver would only swerve in one direction that is the direction of oncoming vehicle oncoming truck ko nyinga ila moto ba driver nyinga ata nyanna nyinga lonna ko tala driver nyinga nyinga ata mo be alhala sifa nyinga na ba blo faila ba blo faila ni blu lo la mea lon ko moto mantra na ka o fannala the other issue is wo do menti wala nyinti ko that they needed to have known nyanda sulo be jele pour ya long that your driver could not stop ko ila driver ma lono So his only option would be to swerve. Atela to Ida... swerve in the direction of oncoming vehicles. It is a drive for atenyan na men hakilo club diamond ro wala nyiko handing abelo la fana naba blo faila aba blo faila ni fanna la meyalo ko drive moto buka nani ko fanna la. Now the analogy I conclude from the accident of Mr. Fati. Kabodo nga kol miyalo ko nga wala yirika ko min Mr. Fati la accident wa keta nyami. There is a taxi that they were driving behind him. Katu motole bi je non taxi mi ala ko ba borende kan no ko male. And this driver was communicating with the truck driver that was coming from the traffic light Kairaba Avenue. Non ngin taxi driver ni ani choki nyolo ba temale non ani moto ba ni mi ala ko ba bokan nan traffic light ma fama. And they are giving him the calculation of the distance between the junction and their location. Dum fona e ba yirika ka ngay ne comme min distance o min bije ka bo Johnson ota ka fota tema up to the extent that the truck arrived with uh, Mr Fatty's truck uh, vehicle at the same time at the junction for la bang la bang of Mr Fatty la moto an introgo ni na tana ben kak Johnson of moto ko tu Johnson oto i appreciate that all this can happen sanda ni bela ni cool be ce keno i appreciate that for that to work effectively there needs to be teamwork by various various parties eh ni a jango fo nyin ku sifa na pour ay ke ku ferati me yalon ka be tamala nyan na abe kala ku ultime yalon ko mo jamal la ba ko nyin ko na ba ko nyin tamandi kan hakilo kan nyoka but for now let's focus on your own case sila nga nyaati ita fa ngola ku wala yemen taki and the facts around it and in ku nyin laata nyaame ay and abe ku nyin be me ya murumuru a laata nyaame This is very significant because the commission would have to determine your victimization. 
ni nkuo kuma ta baka le kartun commission ngi fay si futa ko ni dandulato ya jube itela ko ni ibulata ni nkuo ni kono nyame and that would have important consequences and nga bina ku kuma bale so me alon ko abina kala kole ya ku kuma le me alon ko bina futa la dandulato so pardon me to interrogate this issue a little bit silo din nambe yam fo dan le bulu pour ngani ni garo ke ni nkuo to do mande you are welcome you would agree Bismillah. with me that for their plan to work they needed to have known that your driver could not stop pour ila ñim fero sitri ngoñi pour ay tama ñanda be ñanta lonnal ko itela drive woñi ata lono la wos o o o o lad o dingira ñind because if he did stop katu ning a lota on his lane atela atela leno ka ngabe silo men ka he would not have been hit by an oncoming vehicle moto dota mano la meya lon ko wala bina kan ga koma you agree yes 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 i agree with that son tawala and that by itself wo drong drong ko ko ñi be laari ñaame this is doubt as to whether this was a plan i hakil flo nati le proof mo sa fo no fo ñi fo fa mu fere sister ngol de ba All right. Um I will agree with you also to an extent. Yes. And you would also agree with me. And when ka bi fa nang ibe sonna male ko for us to use circumstantial evidence. Pour ndol ngam muna fa ndim kuma kan wala men ya lon ko miral kuma kan wala o ram basi keno kuma kan wala it has to lead compellingly to just one conclusion. Fo kuma kan ni sita sita sabati ni ku kilina me ya lon ko wala be sabati la. And you would agree with me and we said namale ko that the set of facts described do not lead compellingly to one conclusion and we said namale ko nyi ngal halo nyi be laari ndu nyaame ma ata futala dinkira kila ndu me alon ko mo sa mutano mo sa o sabatindi no ko be laari ndu wala nyaame because of this loophole that has just been identified ka dum ko nyi nyi siki saka dal me alon ko nga wolel suti ak ko nyi ngono fero nyi ngono that is the possibility that your vehicle could stop wolem asike no feru kol di melon ko ila moto nyi asi lono len and therefore render that plan basically ineffective we men na men bina no asike no men bina sababu ke no law feru nyi men sitan no asike no ata kela feru ti melon ko be kela feru sahaari ngoti men bamban would you agree with that we be son namma wala le ba yes i will agree with you to an extent like i said ha mbe son ne man mbe son ne man no le nya do be nya mam and by extension we hani ka bi ni aju be fo fo wati fo dingira do in the absence of any other facts ning ayata ra ko dol miya lon ko nyanda tar laje bari wol mon taraje that goes to the contrary we na ta nyado kara dol miya lon ko ani do fatatale we might as well consign this case to the realm of speculation ning case ni ni ko ni ni ki ko ni be allah nyani ni a jube sa bina kuta ra ko dandu la nyami sa fo no rabe kala kuma kan kumo le de don ko fori kumo le de waranto ngunu ngunu kumo le do mol fe mol do you agree e sonta wala well at uh, for that i will not agree pour won te sonna wala um this is simply because katu mi atin the officer i believe who has been monitoring me katu momi yalon ko tanka bunda momi yalon ko wole ba haklo to to just before you answer uh, I, my statement is in the absence of any other facts that go to the contrary ning ayatra ko ku be jeme alon ko wala nyanna ko ni sembenti na woteji woteji and woni wo fatatale the facts you have disclosed so far ite ko ni la nya fo nyaame can yes. can can be called speculative or mere suspicion mo sa fo no ron so bi ko ron den waranto kuma kan gen san ron den folo wato la folo ko ite ati tan nyaame in the absence of other facts ning ayatra to nya mem nyanna ko ni to nya yandi la ka sabati ndi wol to man na fin di folo ke Yes. So you agree with that? Ah. So to, to an extent, ah, not conclusively. So, so do you have any other facts? Si lam foye to sabat ko sabati ndu do soto le ba me alon ko mo sa to nya yandi no. Would will remove this from the realm of speculation? Me alon ko be kuma ko be bondi la ku kol ko me alon ko kuma ko nga moy nga ma moy la miral ko mol ronnam. And put it in the basket. And I na na ko nyinta ayake panye kono me alon ko of a veritable attempt on your life membay sabatin la ko to nya to nya nyinde nyimu feral te me alon ko ilafte ni o le tala yes um ah 
I can give other facts ah, in addition to what we have already said. Ah, Please go ahead. Just like I said, when I moved to Kanifing, December, I just before Kanifing, December, just before the elections, I want to say it was after the elections, it was within that period in December. I know my watchman in my garden at Jalamba. Na watchman o nying mi alonko wole na garden oto Jalamba. Gave me a call early in the morning at 4 a.m. On command the telephone oto watila talan nannings. And asked me where I am. Hengi ninka ebe muntole. I said, I'm in Carnifing. Well, what is it? Why this call at this time? Said the people who came here looking for you, if those people see you, uh, he is afraid of the consequence. And he said, I should leave the country immediately. I said, but why? Said, the way they are dressed and their vehicle shows that they are officers. He cannot recognize any of them. They are all wearing face masks. And the next Mo the same morning, did he say whether they were carrying anything? No, he didn't go to that extent. But the 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 boys where they passed at two a.m. on the way to my compound. They found them on the highway brewing attire. Asked for my compound. But the way they saw them dressed also, they immediately sensed some danger. Said they don't know my house. So which means they went on, on searching that night on their own until they got to my garden at 4 a.m. in the night. And the, the early in the morning, so Manda Juno, my watchman went to my house na watchman told my family that I should leave the country. And they all started calling my mom, uh, my dad, yeah. my sisters, and everyone. Everyone was worried about my safety. I said, I am safe here. And secondly, I am handicapped. I am sick. I cannot go out at this Critical moment. But then the pressure mounted. The whole day they, they were insisting that I should leave the country. But And the only way I could calm them down was to agree to their request. And I said, okay, I will leave. But then I never left. I stayed in Kanifing. Kanifing. Locked my gate. Locked my veranda. Locked my door. And locked everywhere. And I bought enough food stuff to serve me for two weeks. And that coincided with the impasse. Until the former president eventually left the country and I was free to go out. For president Koto Mimbejana, I don't have bank account. I'm from another, I'm from Soto, Wolenyama.
effectively you went into hiding. Exactly. Ah, exactly, yes. And I can tell you, Mr. Mboch, that uh, I appreciate how hard it is for anyone to have to leave his or her country or to go into hiding. And by reason of fear of the security forces that are entrusted with your own security. So I am sorry to you and to, F, to all those persons it happened. But you would also agree that the two incidents could be just separate. And may not have any direct connection. Do you agree? Well, I will not agree to that suggestion. Because I see it as a continuation of the act after the accident where I still escape from the accident. Ibe continue kana kaka kena seka tuma kabla watu mna accidento nyingi kwa faa banda ibe continue kanga kuki lingo ni neno. But you would agree? Hana kabi be sana leko. That that continuation you're talking about. O kome alonko abe tentenga ibe mna kumofu kwa. The weakness in that argument. O ba o o kume alonko wale o kuni nasi ndi domande o balang o balang ni. Is the difficulty? Wala mkoleyati. O the weakness. Waranto nasi ro ni. Identified in the penultimate limb. May along with stand it out, go into. May along with four and yard, go into. That is, it is not conclusive. Well, I'm into go go into man sabati follow. That that act. O baroning was by state agents. O baroning more lele ya ke may along with na service lal de banko do kulal. And if it is not conclusive, ning ayatra o baroning fana na mang teng amang amang kumva nu fana. It means it is. It may not be part of the chain. Part of the link in that chain. As again, no more. Safo fanam kwa atakela atetarla kuol kono meya longo ye choki ibe mu kule meya longo ye nyo male ku kili mo na wale bori kandrong. You agree? For isonta wala. Um, sorry to say, but I cannot agree with that. But in ba ba fola ko mansion wala. This is. Yeah. We we would leave it at that. Ba bula la wala. I think the commission would have enough to be able to make an assessment. Of, of the facts in order to determine whether this is one continuum or that there may have been a break in the chain. Either way, uh, the commission would uh, make an assessment on the Kita nyawa ni nyaran di nyama. Kami sama bersila le ya jube bapu ni yeri kalau nula nyamen. And would decide one way or the other. And nombe kami sama bina aku kundula aku ni do nyam do nyam. But in 2006, you did say that you sorry excuse me. You did say that you met Bailo and others in prison. Bari hani kabi sero in 2006 sawa kono iko Bailo ni do kotangulu ni ini nyoje nungkaso bungoton. In which capacity? Ie je mu alhala le kono. As counsel. Visiting? Or in some other capacity? Could you tell the commission, please? Yeah, this was in 2010, not 2006. Uh, pardon me, that, that was a slip. When I mentioned 2000, yes, yes. Um, this was after my arrest by the same regime. And I was sent to remand. Uh, I could you give? Could you kindly give us a brief rundown? Of the circumstances that led to your arrest. Ilam fa isa fono nye kula nyala mune narana sababu fong fa inari ne sambaka soro. Very briefly. Asuti yandi de. Um, briefly. Asuti yandi. I defended about 
10 or more cases. Lota pruka de marke mole milia long kwebe diamo kono wo diamo nyata da fo diamo tang wala misiata wati. All from the executive. Wo diamo be bodan nang victims of circumstances. Mansala Karola wo le mole milia long kwebe tum ye torale. I'm sorry they were not victims of circumstances they were either a victim of some nefarious activity by the state <laughs> or they were victims of their own misconduct so well you may be seeking for precision a little elucidation. Yes. Um, uh, circumstances based on their arrest, I mean, trial, and convictions. All me along go a little later. Cabrio Wato me along go be mutakang for an attorney mutaye sinde dula killing. And I myself now became a victim of the same abuse of rights. The phone na ata bula wal kono me along go ye la nyantoni wole tinya. Again. Thank you. You claiming victimhood, victimization. And the commission would be required to make that assessment. Which would implicate having to know the basic facts in order to be able to assess whether this person qualifies as a victim under the circumstances that have been discussed. I mean, the Alonco Commission of Jubi, Laleka, Yirika, Jubi, Foka, Numari, Nimfo, I as footed to Kunkumoto, Maya Lonco, Mosak Mandim, Mola Maya Lonco, I call a sort of a government victim. So tell us, tell us the facts. Silang Tonya for your call for what happened. Muneketa. Why were you arrested? Munea Sabu Yebulo Lake and Yemuda. Oh, um, this was. After the second treason trial, the first one being the Bunja Dabo case in 2006 to seven. And the second was the Lantambang and Sajo Fofana case in 2009. Were you part of the defense team in the Lang Tombong case? For it, I have more corner by all may along all level lowering in two memorial and many along all Lang Tombong case case lumber. I was with uh, S.M. Tambido, he was defending Lang Tombong, and I was defending Mr. Ju, chief of Navy staff. What's his name? <laughs> The second. The Lota Lantomboya and the Lota Moya Mia. Sajo Fofana. Sajo Fofana. The Lota Sajo Fofana. Yes. I was representing Mr. Fofana okay. in the case. Good. So, and then after they were convicted, of course. Munda Okola in Arne Besoro. So, what happened to you? Sila Munana Keta from Kundimola. Well, I was uh, representing a client. I can say pro bono. And uh, uh, the after preparing all his papers for him, I called him for him to come and sign. Because he has the power of attorney from his father, who is an old man. And he was according to him, he was all the way in Tujerang. And he is on a contract. And he cannot leave that job to come to the court to come and sign his affidavit. And he said he had signed it. He said his father is illiterate. And he doesn't sign his thumbprints. And he pleaded with me to print that affidavit for him. 
Natana Dani prove wo kaito nyin ntasa ntasa tombo because of the urgency of the case he wanted file as soon as possible. To go me what in our all and to go abe hammering tariake prove kuma ke a dia morning in se kaito nyin be dun de kiti dun kirato. I gave the processes I mean the papers uh, the interpreter knows what is a court process of course uh, karna sor lanning we all ne ka for me a court process we len kay to ko kiti dula la kay to mi ala ko ko to my clerks to go and file so natana di na klago la prata dun de kiti dula to i did not even tell them to tom print it ma foy fang pour ye ye tombo kala i wanted it filed without a tom print left no nga dun di but when they got to the commissioner for oaths, then Mr. Sambu. But what the highest court. If the affidavit is not signed, so uh, I think it was filed already. But he said the affidavit is not signed and no, or tom printed. Then I had a new member of staff who doesn't know the implications of thumbprinting printing an affidavit and she volunteered to print the affidavit and get it filed. After the filing and the dating and the service of the process, the same client who pleaded with me to find, sign and file it on his behalf, turned around and said he did not authorize me to sign that affidavit on his behalf. He insisted on withdrawing the application before the court. After withdrawing the, the application already, I believe he got a link with the same person who is monitoring me. That is because they come from the same village in Jambanjele. And then he had an opportunity to get me arrested. And ask him to go and report to the police. Well, Mr. Mboj, if the fox is haunting you, Mr. <laughs> and you come and put your hand in its mouth. <laughs> How would you feel if you are bitten by the fox? You called for it, didn't you? Yes. Um, uh, to an extent, yes. If you can anticipate that this client will come back and say he did not do instruct you to do that. Ni nata kool be yire ka yaji be kome nyimmo kilmo mi anna kliano la pa murra la koma la koten kanafa ko atema wo yama ro nyim be. But with all due respect Mr. Mboj. Mr. Mboj, mo nya be kono. We have to call a spade a spade. Tuwa nya mo tuwa nya adron neti. Let's agree that you are, let's take it for granted that you are being hunted. Nga kuwa nyin taaten ka fo kodrong yi tarte yi no masata kanne ibe ibe kuson son kanne. They were looking for a reason to get to you. You knew this fact. That is correct. Tonya. Now let's come to the affidavit. You knew it was irregular to file a purported affidavit because it would not be an affidavit without the signature. I am aware of that. And oh, this is why 
let me let me come and obviously you knew when you gave it to your staff to be filed you, you knew fully well that even if the papers are accepted the affidavit will be thrown out because it is irregular it is incomplete without a Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is an incomplete affidavit. Exactly. Uh -huh. And you knew it would be thrown out. And the effort would have been ineffective. Yes, but I would have relieved the pressure on me to get the document filed. Yes, but step by step. But even at that, uh, it has legal consequences, and I don't want to enter into that. And the tom printing of the document was uttering a forgery. Just looking at it at the strict interpretation of the law that is uttering a forgery document. With all due respect, I'm not suggesting that you did that. We're just, we just looking at the basic facts. What happened. If it was done by your clerk, it was uttering a false document. You agree with that? Yes, yes. I agree with that. That is correct. That is, I will add one condition. If I had given the instruction to do no, that. No, 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 no. We are talking about the act itself. The, the nature, the, the nature, the nature of the act. Of the act. I agree with that. And this uttering of a false document was done by your chambers, by your parties. And that is why I took responsibility for it. Exactly. So having taken responsibility for, for it, you have taken responsibility for a crime. Knowingly, yes. Ah, malo. Consciously. Ah, no, but it is conscious. No, no, no. Okay, we will come to that. All right. All right. These documents were filed, correct? Sorry, yes. Ah. And there would be returns to your office. And yes, that's correct. And as counsel, it is your responsibility to examine your returns. To ensure that your documents are in order. That is, that is right. And, and with due diligence, you would have seen that your office uttered a false document. Yes. That is right. Uh, and well, with that, you well, would have been responsible for that for the for the for the uttering, for the of, uttering that of the document. Yes. And I took responsibility for that. And, and with that, you would have seen that your office uttered a false document. I took responsibility for that. And that itself means you are responsible for a crime that has been committed. And I wouldn't agree with that. I took responsibility for a purpose. Okay. Not a crime. So, so, so you took moral responsibility 
but not legal responsibility. Yes, because accepting responsibility doesn't amount to criminal responsibility. Uh, I will not get into a legal debate on that. But you would appreciate that whether you are legally responsible for that crime or not is a matter for final determination. Of all the issues in view of the evidence. To see whether you have a defense or not. And, and either in order to determine whether the evidence is sufficient to attribute responsibility for you. You agree that would be a matter for final determination. Yes, that is the reason why I was charged. And I was taken to court. And uh, for determination, yes. Exactly. So therefore, these intermediary steps of investigating you and charging you were regular. That is what was expected. Well, this was not a case that was investigated. But, okay, because let, 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 me, let me rephrase it. The intermediary steps of getting to that final determination be it investigations, be it arrest, be it laying a charge, and be it arranging you before a court, you would agree that all these steps are regular. And are expected. I can say they are expected, but ah. not regular. But, but, but how can you how can you expect it? If they are not regular, these are prescriptions of the law. Yeah, there's a procedure for those uh, steps, procedural steps to be taken before your arraignment. Can not in this case. Can you tell me what When the complainant gave his complaint to the police, I was summoned in his absence. On a Thursday. The next day. I was before the court. In the morning. So Manda. But Mr. Mbo, you would agree you would agree with me. Mm -hmm. All the things you have said point more to the efficiency of the wheel of justice yeah, yeah. than than to a to an abnormality. In the process. Well, we have seen experience of cases that state has interest. Uh, so, so, so your beef is that it was fast-tracked. But that is, in fact, what we all crave for. 
that in the justice system everything works so fast, so effectively. That people are tried within a reasonable period of time. People are tried within weeks in which they are after the criminal conduct has been disclosed instead of years. So all the criticisms you have raised are not in fact procedural errors. You agree? Yeah, you have not finished because when I was arraigned for a matter which is... Huh? which is not uh, an arson, not a treason an offense, that is a bailable offense, and then uh, from your arrangement, you were remanded in custody straight away. And denied the right to bail. That was not what is expected and contemplated of a lawyer. But there are other circumstances leading to that, which I have not explained. Okay, we would come to those. Yes. So let's take it step by step. Let's first talk about the arrest. Was the arrest lawful? And be careful, your, your peoples are here. So, 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 so uh, it's your responsibility to teach them the practice of the law. So tell us whether the arrest was lawful. Yes, I will believe that is so. So there is no complaint about your arrest. So the issue now is the detention. The remand. That is and right. And what's the problem with the remand? I know as a matter of fact. That my arrest came shortly after the case of Moses Richards. No, 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 no. What is it called? first. And then when the GBA does the bar association call an emergency meeting. What do me along Nanyim Babundany Wall and Nakafony Cabrina Kilirike? What is it called? Tariake? decided to protest by boycotting the courts. I disagreed with that. And I said no. And I suggested the procedure for impeachment of the president is of which president? president? of course. It's by yeah. marching and filing a petition to the National Assembly. That's what I said this with a caution that we have informers in our midst. And I'm saying this, and I know the next day it will be at the State House. Are you saying this to suggest that there was a motive there for my a reason to want to have you behind bars. Certainly, that is not all. I have other ah. dare challenges that Among I don't think anyone can dare to. Amanko what the mati cool keta nala miya longko keta kuba let miya longko mami la moba hani la koko si fa fonta. But you have no evidence to suggest that Yaya Jame put you in jail because you said that. You only suspect. It's not a suspicion. This is a matter of fact. This is a time when 
the trial magistrate we all know was a Nigerian. Ning mu wat that the mia lan kombe alon ne mi kiti tela ning woman ke womu Nigeria dingole. DPP then. Mia lan ko wole be marari kiti ola. Call Mikaelu. Nyaton ko ikafa Mikaelu. It's also a Nigerian. For now mu Nigeria dingole. And we all know. Dolbe alon. This is a case, a case that can be prosecuted by the police. But, but do you agree that the IGP prosecutes a case on the fiat of the Attorney General? Ibari sante njema lako IGP police wala fanya lake case le kiti ndi mea longo ikanne mea longo kabo Attorney General lebo. I will say yes, matters that the state has no interest. Ha, come in bun a diamo le mi alonko mansaman haji sotoji. That is basically the law. Wala mluwati. Ha, whether interest or no interest, the prosecutorial authority is vested in the DPP under the supervision of the Attorney General. That is correct. That is the law. Kwa 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 had the discretion to remand you in custody. Kwa 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 you agree with that? Santa Wala. No, I don't agree with that. Mansa Wala. Are you suggesting that the presiding magistrate was obliged to let you go on bail? Oh, he left off for the magistrate to remember seeing or kitty or illa or kitty or nyinkuna. A balance of proof can bail deal about. No, was obliged. Nyanta can bail deal. Nyanta bail deal. Sorry. He's not even obliged. Exactly. And by not being obliged, the presiding magistrate had a discretion. Cuma lama mana amang amang bel nyin dia, orang majistret orang nying ay sembuh sorang perlu ke bel dia. He had no discretion under the constitution. Lua bangkola lua bato amang was sorang. Bel is a constitutional right under. It's a constitutional right under the constitution, but yeah, it is discretional under the CPC, criminal procedure. But, yeah, but, but this is precisely what I have just said. No, the what? constitution supersedes the CPC, and that makes it a right. It's a fundamental right. And not a discussion. So that's where I disagree with. Uh, uh, okay, let's let's do it this way. Sorry, the interpreter is not following me. <laughs> yes, sorry. So that was a bit too legalistic. Maybe yes. that's the reason why they yes, got lost. Yes, but yes. let's do it this way. Yes. Mr. Boj. Yes. Mr. Boj. You agree that bail is not an absolute right. It's not an absolute right. Among the mobi nyandoti. A nyantale kake. Ah ah. Among it's not. It's not an absolute right. I I know you're thinking, Mr. Boj, but it's not such a difficult question. See, there is. It is technical. I know I'm before a commission and I'm before. Nalo nako. Learned experienced people here. Mbe mole nyati nwala, mbe komisyon nwala nyati nwala, andu mbe mole nyati nwala miya ye londo shoto. It is not an absolute right. No, you know, absolute is a relative term. It's not... Absolute means absolute. There is nothing relative about absolute. Absolute is as absolute as the word. Nyanta wom nyanta lwane. Because the reason why I don't want to agree with that is because... Dalilo miyati na man lefka so wala, wale nyinti ko. Under the CPC, Nina ta fanna la mia lua la mia lango wala matakuja okio, kuja okio. It is a discretion. Fanna mia lango. And there, it is not absolute. Wato dula la mia lango isa okio nole. But even in the constitution, lua bugba ni mfungo. It is not. It is mandatory under the constitution, section 19, to grant bail. It's a fundamental right, and that right is. Mandatory, couch in mandatory language. If you bring the constitution, okay. section 19 sub 1, uh, I says that no one shall be deprived of his or her prop, uh, his or her uh, liberty. Yes, but except. Uh -huh. And by saying except, what in does that mean? By in saying, accordance. Okay, just a moment. By saying except, you have removed it from the realm of it being absolute. To import some derogation. No, 
Uh, I don't want to agree with the use of the word absolute. Bring the constitution. I will, uh, go I will, to Mr. Geisho. He would give you the constitution I will and you bring it. it. I will equate it between... But... Uh, between... Go to Mr. Geisho. He has the right out there. Uh, but, I think he's in the witness room. He, okay, go to the witness room. He's there. Uh, this, is, this is very basic, Mr. Moj. Uh, it's either... These fundamental rights are not absolute. There are derogations. And the derogations are the exceptions that apply to them. And because there are exceptions, you cannot call them absolute. Is it, um, this is basic principle of law, isn't it? Surely there is a line and a thin line of distinction between the mandatory and discretionary provisions of the Constitution and the applicable general law, that's the CPC. And the only mandatory provision you had with regards to bail was the absolute provision that for a charge of murder and treason, they were not bailable. That's the only absolute provision. Because there's no exception. The rest of it was not absolute. The rest of it was based on the discretion of the judge after evaluating all the evidence to satisfy the judge that this person is not a flight risk and that this person would not tamper with the evidence if he or she were to be released. Those are the only two conditions in which a judge is judiciously able to deny bail. Agreed? Well, yes, there are laid down conditions, obviously. Uh, for you to satisfy before you are granted bail. Okay. If those conditions are satisfied, uh, let's it becomes... agree. Let us first agree on the law. That the magistrate had the discretion to grant or not to grant bail. Under the general law, yes. And, and under the constitution. No. Um, the discussion will be eroded with the mandatory provision of the Constitution. Uh, well, with what you are saying, Mr. Mboch, it therefore means nobody can go to jail. No, I did not say that. Well, if it is absolute, if, if it is absolute that everyone has an absolute right to liberty, it means no one can go to jail. If you build in the exception, except where the person is lawfully convicted by a court and sentenced to a term of imprisonment, then you create the exception for a person to go to jail. Here is the Constitution. Look at Section 19, section Personal 19. Right to Liberty, and read it. I'm familiar with this section. But I am not so familiar with this section <laughs> because I haven't read the Constitution for the longest time. But I can tell you with 100 degree of certainty that there is no law that would give an absolute protection for the right to liberty. I can tell you that. Is it, if you look take at, a look at it. If you look at the language... Just of, take a look at it and read it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, if you look at the language of section 19, yeah, one, just read it out. Okay. Every person shall have the right to liberty and security. Mm -hmm. No one shall be, de shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest and detention. Arbitrary arrest. So let's underline arbitrary. Arrest and detention. And what does that mean? No one shall be subject to unlawful arrest and detention. Yes. And that means anybody could be subjected to lawful arrest and detention. Your arrest was lawful, you accepted. I agree. 
it says no one shall be deprived of his or her liberty eko i move for wala nyinde ko manya na mo balela ye ila fan so dola ye fam this is unlawfully atrani lwa manta unlawfully atrani lwa manta this is the third time that mm. the word sal is used in section 191 the third time it says sal which is mandatory we all know that uh, mr boch you are you are putting emphasis on the wrong on the wrong word it yes. is not about the shall it exceptions is, are there exactly i exceptions are there i agree if you satisfy those conditions it becomes mandatory i'm not i i'm not comfortable with the use of absolute because no right is absolute exactly i exactly. agree with that there is no right which is absolute the so, the issue is between whether it is a discretionary right or it is a mandatory right uh -huh. yes but if, if you satisfy the conditions then it is mandatory uh, but no if it is discretionary it it implies that it is not mandatory it's simple semantics See, there are two different languages when it comes to the right to bail we have the cpc which makes it mandatory and i am saying that the constitution makes it mandatory mandatory if, for what if you satisfy the, re the requirements laid down for your bail for the granting of bail it is mandatory it's all you will be refused bail only if you are a flight risk you will interfere with the witnesses or, or something of that sort yes yes then you are not that is where the discretion but, comes but in but this is what i have been saying all the time yes okay the magistrate had the discretion all right magistrate on yesem boso to to grant or not to grant bail di waron do kana bail di all right and the discretion was to be exercised judiciously and the would sem boni luay fana mens di ala pour asa tamandi ni tilingo kon and the judicious consideration and the lu tilingo nyim fana na fana aba hakilo tu la woto was flight risk tampering with with well, witnesses or tampering with evidence abe ko hakilo tu la mendo wala masla ngon nyindi wo nay bel di ala fa be kala moldi mano ka be kala masla moldi jama kon aning fo ni abe kala moldi mano ka ba da you know in your head so thank you for agreeing no, i agree with you okay uh, so do an if you did earlier yes, on you would not have had all this legalistic uh, polling no, uh, but uh, i'm not comfortable with the absolute word well it's not well, right which is absolute well it is, you use the word absolute no. you you said this was absolute no 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 No, okay no. all right then the i misunderstood you the language of the constitution is couched in mandatory language that is makes it compulsory for you to have bail if you satisfy the required conditions i agree okay so the judge exercised the discretion the granted judge. to him or her or the magistrate and assess the evidence in your case and decided to remand you in custody ayla kuma ko ni be yirika aya juube me alon goldo sujiri la tumiro la men la tay kan ana ta sabatin de pour que samba ka so what happened that is not the case what man ka quality after the reading of the charges abri na tay tumiro ni karanye normally you are entitled to apply for bail ah en ka ke no nyamel rek ane min ka ga wala nyenti se dundir ke no le pour ye bail soto i was not given the opportunity to apply for my bail man na wo wato fo dina pour nga dundir ke pour se bail soto no nyam you would agree with me be son namale ko that there is no law luwa o luwa teje which says that immediately upon your arrangement me ya luwa me ya fako tari ya ringe uni e samba kiti o nyati lingola uh, the presiding judge or magistrate o kiti kundula nyim fo kiti kundula duma lan kolam wala do fosando lan kolam ba shall give you the opportunity to immediately apply for bail a nyanta silo dila dile la tari ya ringe pour ite dundiro ke daniro la karo la pour ye beli ro so there is no written law on that luwa teje me alon ka be safering wo fannala you agree with that sonda walal uh, yes i agree that Good. i will explain. okay then let's, let, let, let me ask my next question but ngena nyi man ngana nyi nin kardo bana nyi nin kana and by deciding to remand you in custody wo kiti kundula nyi ka kan wata pour que samba kaso do ke sin dije the presiding magistrate has not deprived you wo kiti kundula nyi ame bali of the possibility ko eh ko la mi alon ko isikeno to apply for bail 
pour ici dans roke pour belé rola you agree ils sont dans no i no agree with that man so wala did you apply for bail at any stage oui dans roke belé rola ko la bang wati wati to bang i did not ani but was in that a matter of choice but for man ko kuti me alon ko atudete la bulo ici sa ke no it's not a choice but a right what I'm, trying to what I'm trying to explain if, if the matter is proceeding to trial on the same day the charge is read before the adjournment of the case the trial magistrate or the judge is mandated by yeah, law to consider your right to bail Mialonko kitio be mole bulu kitite la nyinga nyanta ka jiber ka ko la mialonko wala nyante bon i yese dundir ke no priye bel soto Mr Mbot you know that the wheels of the criminal justice system are moved by emotions they are not just moved by wishes or dreams it is alone ne ko they are moved by emotions jo baro la loi la ya ko la ndi nyamento ni be ko dani rol ke la nyi sifal le ko dani ro ke ni safro le ba fo me moso ni bukata ni miral ko ro na ra ni dianya ko is that not the case wala manga ko la nyaati there is a procedure in every court yeah yes but but answer the question kitit bunda o kitit bunda not only by motions motions apply in yeah okay uh, well, superior courts okay. this is a court of summary jurisdiction but it it's yeah, it's a motion is you have to apply by motion that is a formal application but you it has to be to an, an application oh, yeah exactly you okay. have to bring yeah, an yeah, application okay, good so it's not just a wish or a dream there has to be Abogadien something Abogadien. that would trigger the process correct Abogadien. That is yes correct ah, if well, you are did, the did you apply for bail did you trigger did you trigger the process by applying for bail for a silo ni no ma satala ban poka ka bulan ni silo la mialo ka dani roke pour bail i be in mind your previous answer did you apply for bail ye dani roke pour bail la bail la ban i said before i will apply for bail did you oh, apply for bail ni roke bail la ban just answer that question did you apply for bail for a dundiro kala pour bail ko la ban there is a procedure in court yeah just tarambulo le bekiti just answer the question i was not given the opportunity to apply for bail mo wato din na pour nga dundiri ke na bail ko la but all it took mr mbot you are very learned in the law e ko ko ta nyaa 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 ni nda mr mbot mo mo ko ya lon ko ya ndo sor luwa la is for you to say your honor I wish to apply for bail on the basis of section uh, 19 of so, 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 so yes. that, that's all you need to say. Isn't that the case? 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 Isn't that Was your mouth gagged? You can do that when the court finishes recording what it is recording. Iko okay no la ninki di la pareta ka safari ka kuwa la miyala ko abake. That is unprofessional. Ka dung ninki ko ba la kuwa la ninki. But that's what we do every day, Mr. Boj. We interrupt judges. We 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 say things. Sometimes we even talk over each other. This is normal. I agree. I agree. But yes. If if a court records. your plea after your plea yeah. and sends you to remand without giving you the opportunity to apply for bail and you are saying that whether my mouth was gagged i was not gagged and you know that because i uh, in okay. court nobody can gag your mouth okay so the reason why i ask these questions mr boj is to ask, determine because what we mm -hmm. are mandated to determine is Hello. the unlawfulness of your detention dari lo me asa ngay nyinin karo nyinin ka wolam nyinti ko ka tun do do go men di tan to la wolam nyinti ko ka kol kisiz ka jube muda ro men kede la wolam afani luanta yale mbam fo munen and the test would require us to examine all the procedural steps no ko to boro nyin me wo en kanin nyin na pour nga silol nyin be jube ka jube fo silol tata la ba me anko en nan wolel tala jandi be sambala kaso if the police had arrested you and bundled you and taking you to straight to mile 2 without any paper as has happened in many cases ning aydra police oli mudal roye kafu nyoma re yesamba kase bumba to koy ka kodol ka nyaa warra kayti wo kayti deje ka do lakko la nyaame then we say this dissension is unlawful ren safo no wada ko de yetta la mudaro nyi wanta ya mudaro lem but you were taken before a 
court. But it is some key detail that you are not And the court sanctioned your detention. And the court le nara na kango kundo puri tala mutaro ni na kie samba kie sindi blagile. Is that not what happened? Wale manke ba. That is what happened. But Wale we kata? all know. But in be alone no ko. So then, because that is what happened, that is what the law prescribed. That if you arrest the person, take the person before a judge in seven, in seven, within 72 hours. Yes. Uh -huh. And then, and then the judge uh -huh. will decide whether to release you on recognizance or to detain you. Yes, Tom, key detail and you will be able to do that. 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 You will be able to do and whether the judge is, was right in the considerations or wrong does not mean that your detention was unlawful. The mere fact that the judge considered the issues and arrived at the decision whether to release you or not rendered it lawful. The judge could have made a mistake in the application of the law, but that is a matter for appeal. On this particular occasion, Mr. Mboj, it looks like it was regular. Sedo niyaji veetela inkora alhalo la kuola la nyame mosa fono ko aninsilo tatale. I will. I beg to disagree with you. I'm, I, 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 I don't want to uh, argue perhaps, legally. Or, or uh, uh, my arrest and detention, whether it's legal or okay, lawful okay. Uh, or uh, Mr. lawful, Mr. Mboj, Mr. Mboj, that is for the commission to decide. Yes, the commission, the commission would make its finding on these things, Mr. and uh, and if you. I don't know what that finding would be, but in the event that uh, they made a finding with which you are not happy, uh, you could uh, you could uh, utilize the provisions of the rules of procedure to deal with that issue. So you were sent to detention. Yes, I'm about yes, indeed, luckily. Whether lawfully or unlawfully. What happened next? We will indicate to you uh -huh. that it was just. Oh. A kangaroo court. Why? Because if you are detained on Friday, on Monday you are supposed to appear in court. And before you appear in court, you are already granted bail. Is that a court? That's how the court works. As a lawyer, we all know that but, before but, you but are but granted bail, even, even, you have to stand before the court. But, but even if you impugn that decision, what you are impugning is the release and not the detention. Even the detention is wrongful. Uh, as far as I am concerned. Your, your difficulty, Mr. Mboj, is to pinpoint a legal reason which would be the ground to base a finding that the detention was unlawful. Uh, what I am saying before this honorable commission is but, that my not only the detention, even the arrest, the detention, the prosecution is all politically orchestrated. And that may very well be true. That is what I'm saying. Yes, but the fact that it may have been politically motivated. Does not mean that the process was unlawful. You agree with that? No, I don't agree because you can use the due process of the law to abuse the same process. And that has been the order of the day. The law is being used to abuse people's rights. And that is what happened. What I can agree with in your case is the executive had a beef with you and the, you gave the executive an opportunity to deal with you and they used the law to deal with you. To produce a consequence that you were did, you, do, you did not wish for yourself. But that does not mean that the process was unlawful. 
But a woman in Firinko Kafo was still bent on the day, and still let me yell on Kulu and Tayalam. Well, I will not agree with that. That's on now. Because. But okay, let me ask you this question, Mr. Mboj. Mr. Mboj. If you had killed somebody, God forbid, I think we've said that in unison. Okay, let me use another example. Okay? If you had hit somebody. Can you reverse it? If you had hit somebody. Yes. Yes. Yes, then, that's right. Yes. yes. Example of yourself. Yes. If, okay, if I had hit somebody. Yes. And, you, and uh, it is understood that this is a crime. Like an accident. No, no, if I deliberately do it, it's a crime. Correct? That is yeah. right. Would I be entitled to arrest? Sure, certainly. Ah. Ah. Would I be entitled to detention pending trial? Yes, that's a, that's a right. Ah, the prosecution, they have the right to 72 hours detention. Uh, but even after the 72 hours, would it be procedurally correct to bring me before a magistrate or a judge and have me detained? No, you can be brought before a court of law, but Say you cannot be no. detained. You cannot be detained. No, because because is, is, that, is, is that the law that is practiced in this country? The, um, we are dealing with a situation that we are all aware. I am talking, I'm not talking about a situation. I'm talking about the application of the law straightforward facts. For instance, it, does facts. a judge or a magistrate have the power to detain me in the circumstances described? If it is a misdemeanor and it is a bailable offense, you are entitled to bail. Being entitled to bail does not mean that I will necessarily and must get bail. You accept. It, it means I may or may not get bail. Correct? It depends on the facts. Exactly. So it depends on the facts. And since... Ah, just a minute. You want a few minutes, Mr. Yes, Moon? yes. Okay, please, so by all means. Comfort myself, Mr. Ah, of Chair. course, by all means. Perhaps, Mr. Chair, we could just take the break now, the lunch break. Uh, yes, we take the lunch break. Are you continuing break. with him? When we come back, I will take only 20 minutes with him, because, and then we'll finish. Uh, I, I, 20 I, minutes or 10 minutes? 20 minutes at <laughs> most. Uh, I, I mean, I can leave this point and just leave it to the commission to, to decide. But I, I just wanted to ensure that all the relevant issues for consideration has been brought out and that he knows that those considerations are being taken into account. No, I'll leave it to you. If you need to um, uh, continue with him Twenty minutes. briefly, we can do that after the one-hour lunch break. Yes, Mr. Chair. Twenty minutes most. So yeah. we can do that. But let, let him just come back and then I'll... I uh, respect him and honor him with the uh, we, announcement that we will go. No, uh, he I'll, can be informed. I'd ra rather do it. Yeah, let's, let's wait until. Okay, all right, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I don't Chair. want to um, uh, close the thing in his absence. Much applied, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Much applied.
Yes, I'm sorry about that. No, Mr. no, no, no problem at all. <laughs> it's called of nature. Um, we will take a, a lunch break and then come back at uh, three o'clock. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Gambia may be the smallest country in Africa, but it will host the second largest gathering of world leaders in 2022. To successfully host the OIC summit and put the Gambia on the global stage, the government of the Gambia set up OIC Gambia to mobilize resources for the implementation of key development and infrastructure projects on a scale never seen before. 20 new roads will be constructed across the country and the Bertel Harding Highway will be expanded into a dual carriage highway of two lanes on each side from the airport to Sting Corner. All people in the Gambia deserve clean water and a constant flow of electricity. Therefore, an entirely new water system will be constructed, including new transmission and distribution networks to meet the increasing demand. In order to provide a more reliable supply of electricity, the OIC Gambia project will replace and double the capacity of the Nawak transformers and overhead electric cables. We will equip the police with modern apparatus and technical training in an effort to keep the streets of the Gambia safe. By building the largest international conference center in the region, a five-star hotel with state-of-the-art facilities, first-class mobility services, and improving the